Take me home, take me home to the land of the Pecos. Near that stream, let me dream neath the sky. This old heart keeps on beating, repeating fond echoes of the brave and the bold riding. During the 1870s, the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stuck the bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. <laughs> I got him and did he get the, get the... It's a gold, you mean? No, he didn't get it. Medical attention bad. This is Judge Bean's chest day. Doc Bentley will be at the store. Well, let's get Doc Bentley out here. We'll put these boys in the cabin. Come on. Uncle Roy, you've been sitting like this for a half hour. When are one of you two going to make a move? He knows I've got him, lady. You know, Judge, we've been playing chess together for too many years. What do you mean by that? Well, you got me softened up. I'm beginning so that I'm merciful. If you could just give me a little competition, Judge. So any day before dawn, I could spot you four pieces in the bishop and beat you in ten moves. Eh? Yeah, well, then why don't you? If you could move those pieces as well as you move your mouth, I wouldn't have a prayer. <laughs> Still your move. Hmm. You touched that. Why? You touched that bishop. That means you gotta move it. Why? Well, this is my court and I make the rules, and that's one of them. You gotta move it if you touch it. Well, oh. all right. I'll move it. Check. <coughs> <coughs> you heard from that clinic of yours lately, Doc? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, going to close. Close? But it can't. <laughs> Unless I can raise several thousand dollars. It's going to close. Didn't you leave enough stocks and trust to support it, Doc, when you came out here for your health? Well, yes, that's what I thought, but uh, you know what can happen to socks. Yes, it did. Say 
don't have to spoil your chess game, Judge. Hi, what's wrong? Bert Rito just shot up the mine. Killed the superintendent and wounded a couple of miners. The men need medical attention bad, Doc. Well, yes, of course. Will you show me the way? I'll go with you, Doc. Oh. If you say my buckboard's outside, you can use that. Oh, well, thanks, Judge. Thanks. Okay. Rito get the payroll? Got a shot in the leg. And another murder on his record. Well, Judge, I'm afraid I'll have to postpone that beating until next week. Yeah, I'll let you off the hook, Doc. Goodbye, Judge. Bye, Letty. Bye, Steve. Come on, Doc. Bye. Bye. again in a few days. I don't think there should be any complications. Doc, you're a good man with a bullet hole. Best we ever had. Practice I get. Well, I'd better get after Bert Reno. He's had a long enough start already. Yes, that's it. Bye, Doc. business to talk over. What's that, a gunshot wound? Well, it ain't a snake bite. I'll take care of your wound for you, Bert, but I'll have to report this to Judge Bean. Huh? I don't think you'll report it to anybody. Anesthetic? Huh. It'll hurt. So it'll hurt. I told you we got business to talk over. What kind of business? I understand you need money, Doc. Lots of it. I know where you can get it. All the money you want, real easy. Yeah? Who do I have to kill? Me. I'll move the queen here. Doc sees her sitting there alone. He can't resist. Well, I guess this is the place they mentioned, Marion. Judge Roy Bean. Do you really think you'll be able to help us, Charles? If anybody can. That is, if your brother ever did come down here. <laughs> you never beat a gambit like that. Checkmate and four moves. <laughs> Do you think that's fair, Uncle Roy? Huh. Practicing like that. Well, anything's fair in love and war, child. The way the doc and I play chess, it's war. <laughs> That won't work, Judge. Oh, how are you, young fella? Lady? <laughs> Charles Henry, an attorney. Actually, I'm representing Miss Marion Reynolds. How do you do, Judge? It's my niece, Lady. Hello. Nice to meet you. Judge, we've been driving a long time, and Marion's pretty tired. Do you suppose she could freshen up while you and I talk? Certainly. Come on this way. That sounds wonderful. Mm-hmm. Take a look at this the last will and testament of Albert Reynolds, Sr. I hereby bequeath one-third of my estate to my beloved son, Albert Reynolds, Jr., two-thirds to my devoted daughter, Marion. In the event of the death of one of the children, the entire estate goes to the survivor. What's this got to do with me? Albert Reynolds, Jr. came west years ago and just disappeared. Howdy, Judge. Howdy, Steve. Meet Mr. Hendren, an Eastern lawyer. Steve's a Texas Ranger. Maybe he can help you out. How do you do? How do you do? I was hoping Jeff would be around. I know he'd be interested in the news about Reno. What news? Reno's dead. Dead? 
You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just wrote from Dr. Bentley's. Here, he signed the death certificate. He died in the doctor's office. Who's Reno? Bird Reno? He's as bad an outlaw as we've ever had in the Southwest. <laughs> See, the way this looks, the doc ought to get part of that, that reward money, don't you think, Steve? Said dead or alive. You're right, Judge. You sure use it, too. Well, they're trying to close down that clinic of his. Yeah, I got a ride over there, too. Mind if I ride along with you? Of course not. You like to go along, too, Steve? No, Judge, I've got to make out a report. <laughs> you know what's the funny thing? A fellow like this, Reno, he lives with a hoot and a holler. Then when he dies, he does so quiet, nobody pays any mind. <laughs> I'll see you gentlemen later. Well, we see you soon, Steve. Maybe I'll drop by tonight, Judge. Good boy. Nice meeting you, Mr. Hendren. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Mighty respectable. We just buried Bert Reno, Judge. Bert Reynolds? That's the man we've been looking for. That's Marion's brother. You seem to be in an all fired hurry to get it done, Doc. No use letting him lie around. He had no money on him, nobody to claim him. Well, I guess you're right. How did it happen? Well, uh, this man here, Mr. Jones, Mr. Thompson, they're new homesteaders around here of a Twin Oaks. They found Bert Reno along the roadside with a bullet in his leg. We didn't know who he was. He looked about done in, but I figured maybe the doc could help him. Not a chance. He bled every drop in him. What's the matter with you, mister? I'm sorry, it's just... I've got the funniest feeling I know you from somewhere. I don't think so. Does the name Hendren mean anything to you? No. No, not a thing. Who is this young fellow, Judge? Oh, he's a young lawyer from the East. Mr. Hendren? Doc Bentley. How oh, do you do? How do you do? Hendren came out here with a lot of money for a man. Got here too late. Man's dead. Bert Reno? Well, who inherits the money now? The sister. Sister gets it. Oh. It reminds me, I came out here with a lot of money for a feller. You. Well, what do you mean, Judge? A reward for Reno. No reason why you shouldn't have it. It ought to keep that clinic of yours going for quite a while, Doc. Shall we get over to your office and fill this out? Yes, yes, I guess so. Are you coming, Mr. Hendren? No, I think I'd better go back and talk to Miss Reynolds. Think you can get there by yourself? Oh, sure. Doctor, would you mind filling this out for me? Legal proof of death by the tending physician to settle the estate. The judge can bring him back. Oh, yes, I guess so. Mm. Yeah, you just fill that out right there. Yes. I, I, says, I, let's get over to your office. Fill it out. That Henron fellow recognized me. We got work to do. Legal. Shouldn't take you long to get the money. Must give you a good feeling, eh, Doc? Think of all the people that clinic's gonna help. Yeah, yeah, a good feeling. Well, what about that uh, paper of the lawyers? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Judge, are you gonna be ready for your usual licking tomorrow? Well, you just better be glad that you don't have to bump up against this hindrance. Oh? They beat Yale two years running. He even managed to show me a point or two about the game. Now, Judge, you know, I've delivered babies that could do that. Well, you better bring one of them along with you tomorrow and sit in for you.
Maggie, Marion. Something's wrong. What is it? What is it? What's wrong? It'd be better if you didn't see Marion. Is he dead? Yes. Oh, John! <laughs> is there anything I can do to help you, Marion? Letty's right. Killing a hen run doesn't make much sense, does it, Judge? There's got to be a reason if you look in the right place. And where's that? Maybe in Mescal City, in the graveyard. In the graveyard? We'll ride over there. Nose around a little bit. Wouldn't hurt to take Steve along with us, an official witness. Right. We'll be right back later. Give them tools there. Speaking of the devil, here comes Steve now. <laughs> Howdy, Steve. You're just in time. How are you on the end of a shovel? Not bad, Judge. Where are you headed? Going over to Mescal City. Cemetery. Jeff, hand me the pick. How are you feeling, Marion? I want to get out of this terrible country. I want to leave right away, as fast as I can. I understand that. But the judge will probably want to see you when he gets back. I won't be here. Why don't you stay a little while longer? Well, I guess so. I've got to get back to the store now. If you want anything or if you need any help, just let me know. Thank you, Letty. Hello, sis. Bert. They said you were dead. Oh, I am. Dead and buried, officially, and I'm going to stay that way. But why? Did you ever hear of an outlaw named Bert Reno? Well, that's me. You and I are the only ones who know I'm still alive. Now I know. It was you who killed Charles. He recognized you. So you murdered him. Oh, now, sis, you're forgetting. I'm dead. I couldn't murder anybody. Why'd you come here? You didn't really think I'd let my kid sister cheat me out of my inheritance, did you? Where's me out just watching you boys work? <laughs> well, we're almost deep enough. I'll take over for a while, Steve. Thanks, Jeff. Uh-oh. There it is. I, I know that sound. You hit it. What are you going to do? Come on. It's empty, Judge. Just a bunch of rocks roll up in a blanket. Hey, Bert Reno did check out in a hurry. But how'd you know about it? Uh, just a hunch. Several things didn't quite add up. <laughs> you just act natural. Let's go pick up Dr. Bentley. Just a minute. Doc Bentley's not going to go anyplace. Picking him up ain't going to help catch Bird Reno. Then what do you suggest, Judge? We fill this grave back in. Fill it in? Yeah, so the doc won't see it and know that we're on to him. Hendren recognized Reno. That's why Reno had to kill him. We'll ride back to Langtree as fast as we can. There's only one person alive that can put the finger on him, and that's Marion. Well, let's fill it up, Steve. Let's go. Uncle Roy, she left town. Left town? Why? 
I don't know. The last time I spoke to her, she said she was going to stay. The next thing I knew, I saw her driving out of town with two men. Which way did they go? They headed out the north road. Well, that's right. simple letter to the executor. Tell him to sell everything. But, Dad, business. I said everything. Have him send the money to you, Kara, my friend here. And remember, the sooner we get it, the sooner we turn you loose. Then we'll head for the border. You were never any good, Bert. Dad knew it, too. But he'd never admit it to himself. You just write. <laughs> There's Mary in the buggy. Your hunch was right, Judge. Come on. Somebody's coming. I've gotten out of a dozen tighter spots. But this time we've got a trump card. They're not going to shoot as long as Mary is with us. Come on. Hurry up. To you. Drop, Miss Reynolds. Drop. Sorry, Miss Reynolds, but that's the way it had to be. I know. Well, that was too close. Uh. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Doctor. Where's that old reprobate of a knuckle of yours? Ready for his weekly licking? He said he'd be a little bit late, but he'd like you to wait. Oh. Well, I'm not going to let him off the hook of that last game. You decide to show up and take your beating like a man, huh? <laughs> I thought maybe you'd run out on me. It's our last game, Judge. It's your move and your king was in check. Well, what made you do that, Judge? Don't you believe a man can die twice? Why, that's medically impossible. Why? Because one just did. Who? Bert Reno. Steve and Jeff just killed him over at the homestead after you buried him yesterday. Letty. Well, what's the idea? This court's now in session, Doc. I hate to do this, but I got to indict you on three counts. Harboring and aiding a fugitive from the law, attempted fraud to get a reward, making out a phony death certificate. But due to extenuating circumstances of which this court has knowledge, namely to wit a welfare clinic sponsored by you, and numerous other sacrifices and services to your fellow man, this court finds it in its heart to extend mercy in the form of a parole. It's a decree that you report to this court at 8 o'clock on Saturday night of each week for one entire year. Court's adjourned. Now, let's see whose move was it. So real, I can feel the warmth of a friendly word. So 
I know I must go to the land of the Pecos, there to stay, there to stay.